another sort of broad category for thinking about the overlap of science and faith sometimes goes by the name of the God of the gaps viewpoint. So in this viewpoint, the idea is that the purpose of religion, or the purpose of faith, is to fill in the things that science hasn't quite figured out yet. Um, and uh, this is a view of faith that I think many people impose or have for, say, Christian scientists or religious scientists. But it's actually a view that I've never found a single religious scientist to hold on their own. So despite that, somehow it's a view that's uh, sort of put on them. Um, when you hear, for example, Stephen Hawking say something like he's found a new theory of uh, how the universe began, and therefore what need is there for a god, he's talking about the god of the gaps. To give you another example, um, something just caught my attention just for a few months ago from uh, Physics Today. Cien Yang, a great Nobel Prize winning physicist, wrote a, um, I don't know what you call it, a biography, or a very short uh, um, uh, article about uh, James Clerk Maxwell, who of course you know is famous for his equations and, um, and uh, unifying electricity and magnetism. And so Yang, talking about that great achievement, wrote in this article, Maxwell was a religious person I wonder whether after this momentous discovery, namely the unification of electricity and magnetism, he had in his prayers asked for God's forgiveness for revealing one of his greatest secrets. And this, so this is a God of the gap sort of idea that you know Maxwell believed in a God, but having now furthered the domain of science, had to ask for forgiveness of God because he was pushing God back into a corner. I don't know Cien Yang very well, although he's a great hero of all uh, Chinese American physicists. But um, he might have been joking, but if he wasn't, I think he is uh, probably quite a bit off target in his description of what Maxwell actually thought. Maxwell was actually um, a devout believer, much more than just simply being living in a country that was a Christian country. He, uh, as when he was young, he reportedly memorized large chunks of the scripture, including all of the Psalms which, if you know the Psalms, is quite something. And uh, he wrote many things in letters to his parents as, as he was starting university, indicating uh, this sort of view of how his studies were integrating with his faith. One nice quote I have from him is this one here. He says, I think men of science as well as other men need to learn from Christ. And I think Christians whose minds are scientific are bound to study science, that their view of the glory of God may be as extensive as their being is capable. This is, I think, uh, quite a nice uh, summary of uh, a lot of religious scientists' viewpoints, and certainly my own. When I read this, I have uh, something that comes to mind is an analogous thing um, said by uh, a Christian runner, Eric Little. So um, if you've ever seen the movie Chariots of Fire, which has a very famous theme song, um, you know maybe this quote, he says, um, um, let me get it right here. God made me fast, and when I run, I feel his pleasure. I think Maxwell is saying here, basically, God made me a physics genius, and when I discovered new fundamental laws of nature, I feel God's pleasure also. <laughs>